What's up, Pizza Holics? I'm over here at Table 87. Table 87, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn Heights. Not too far from Lakali. Got a lot of good restaurants out here, good barbecue places. Let's go eat. All right, so table 87, I'm super excited. The only coal-fired slice shop, I think, I believe so, in all of the city, coal-fired pizza slices. You can purchase slices, and I wanted slices today, guys, because my last couple of reviews, I've been ordering pies. And old Antonio is down eight pounds since the beginning of last month. So I lost eight pounds, and I'm looking to continue that trend. And so a little, you know, some slices today, guys. Slices, two of them, and they're big slices, too. They're really big slices. It doesn't really appear to be a coal-fired pizza. It doesn't look like a coal-fired pizza. I mean, there's some char on the back. That's not exactly coal-fired char. And if you take a look at that oven, the oven doesn't even look like a coal-fired oven. Uh, but it was a coal-fired oven. If you uh, pay attention and look at the shot of the oven that I got before, there is coal in the corner of the oven, blazing hot, 900 degrees. Supposedly, this pizza is flash-cooked. Flash-cooked under two minutes to make it. Not too much flop going. Very impressed. It's very light. It is very light. Uh, smells delicious, so how does it taste? The sauce is definitely on the sweet side. Look at that, they got a hashtag on the top of the box. Show us your slice on Instagram. I will do that. I will be doing that. Uh, follow me on the gram, by the way, guys, if you haven't done so already. Link in the description section. All right, guys, it's about that time. We have move on in to the lab. Let's dissect table 87 standard margarita pizza here, guys. Very interesting pizza. Very peculiar pizza. I must say, guys, I've never encountered something like this in my life. New York style coal fired pizza, but in the quintessential style, not the you know not the coal fired uh, pizza you are used to seeing in New York City and in New Haven and elsewhere abroad. Big slices, guys. Uh, look at look at that in comparison to my hand. Uh, really, really big, huge. Uh, a little on the floppy side. Uh, there is some nice brown on the pizza. It's some nice dark brown. I don't really consider it char, though. It's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like a toasted undercarriage as opposed to charred. You know what I mean? Would you consider this charred? It looks toasted to me at, at best because of the color. Uh, nothing on the fingers. Nothing. Clean thumbs, guys. If you're the type of guy or gal that doesn't want to get any soot on your fingers, then this is the coal-fired slice for you. This is the coal-fired pizza for you. But aside from that, aside from the clean thumbs and fingers, guys, uh, I can't really recommend this coal-fired slice if you are looking for the coal-fired style, okay? Because the pizza was good. But if you're looking for some true blue coal-fired pizza, this doesn't remind me of it. Now, I don't know if the oven was half gas. I can't I can't say for sure. But I, there, there was definitely coal in there. I mean, it's a coal oven pizza. It's right there. Look at that. Coal oven slice. Very unorthodox. So anyways, guys, let's start with that crust. It was okay. It didn't have any bad aftertaste or anything like that. Uh, but on the chewy side, guys. Look, look, you know, you're going to get some crackling going on. But for the most part... Uh, that's only going to happen towards the cornichone, towards the back. Uh, everything else was basically, uh, there was there's no crisp at all. Very silky sauce, almost no pulp. Uh, a little on the dark side, a little, you know, a little too sweet for me. It didn't come off as naturally sweet or I didn't get 
strong fruity tomato aroma in that sauce. It was more of a, uh, I don't know, it was a different type of sweetness. I can't say for sure, guys. Maybe some tomato paste? Maybe. I don't know. It was not to my liking. That's all I got to say. It's not the sauce I prefer. On the plus side, there's an abundance of it. They dollop it on. Uh, pretty good distribution. I'd say that's pretty good even distribution where you're mostly going to get a nice bite of sauce with each bite. Uh, maybe your second bite is going to be mostly cheese. And uh, so, you know, uh, but for the most part, it's distributed well. Uh, that, that basil, guys, look how dark it is. I, I'm, I'm not feeling that basil. Basil's just supposed to look like that when you cook the pizza with the basil on it. This basil was thrown on after the pie came out of the oven, and it's too dark for my taste, and it didn't taste like anything. It was very dull, not fragrant. The best thing about it, guys, is right there, grated cheese, shards of grated cheese, Grana Padano, or maybe Parm or Pecorino, not sure. Hard grated cheese, nonetheless, and I love that. I really do. It goes well with the uh, fresh mutts. I think this may be a three cheese pie, guys. Sometimes you can't tell until the pizza cools down because I'm seeing fresh mutts here, right? Pretty good quality fresh mutts. It's not that plasticky stuff. Uh, it's, it's it's good. It's rich. Had some good flavor. You can see the striations there. Very milky and rich. And then you got that. Look at that. That looks like low moisture cheese right there. So this may be a three cheese pie. And aesthetically it is right up my alley the grated cheese the three cheeses i love a mixture of fresh mutts and low moisture good textural contrast but um i think the cheese was the best thing about it but everything else was lacking and uh, you know me guys my rule is i mean my motto is that the cheese is the least important part of the pie the crust is the most important the sauce comes second cheese last even though the cheese was great the cheese was phenomenal I can't score this pizza too high. All right, guys, what time is it? It's about that time. The pizza gets cold. We give it another fold, guys. No crackling going on at all. A little bit maybe towards the end. Um, and yeah, it's 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 flopping at the at the back too. It's like not even um, very strange pie. You could fold it like that to prevent flop. Big slice, though. What do you expect? Big slice. But, man, a cold-fired pie, I want some char on this thing, not toast. I don't want a toasted pizza. I want a charred pizza. I can't give this a 7 either, guys. I can't even give it a 7. I'm going to go 6-9 on this. I'm going 6-9. It's a 1-for-3 pizza. I like the cheese, everything else, sauce and crust, not really good. The basil on a margarita, uh, I usually don't take too many points off for the poor basil for the lack of fragrance on the herbs but it sure didn't help the score that's for sure six nine for table 87 brooklyn heights come on down you get a big slice for the price i think i paid three bucks for this thing nice big pizza nice big slices uh it does have its own character though i must say but uh it needs to work on its personality despite having its own character if that makes sense stick around guys we're gonna go head down the street here to uh, van brunt avenue to one of brooklyn's top barbecue joints hometown barbecue grab your napkins and your bibs lean back in that chair we're gonna eat some sticky sticky greasy barbecue <laughs> What's up, guys? All right, so I just put the order in. You got to order online. So I'm waiting for the food to, uh, waiting for them to text me that the food is ready. So uh, I'm walking to the place, and it's really scenic here, too. Figured I'd show you guys around. It's a really nice part of Brooklyn. It's really an old part of Brooklyn. There's Lady Liberty chilling in the back in the distance. A lot of these old warehouses are either now condos or supermarkets. They turn them into anything. Supermarkets, restaurants, you name it. Hey, check this out, guys. Sonny's Bar. <laughs> it's a 
pretty old bar, guys. Really old, really famous, too. One of those places that are so famous, you don't even want to renovate the place. A lot of peculiar places around here, man. Check out this place. I don't even know what it is. All right, I made it. Hometown barbecue. Let's go pick up these briskets. Looking good, looking good, man. Looking good. Sitting, sitting across from the Brooklyn Crab House. Right near the barbecue joint. Got a bunch of picnic tables here. Plopped down on a nice quiet spot. Having a little picnic here on the sidewalk by the waterfront. All right, let's eat, baby. Right, let's go. Let's dive in. One of the top joints in Brooklyn, guys. Hometown barbecue. They wrap it up old school butcher style. I got some jerk ribs, some brisket. Got some veggies, some collard greens mixed with pork shoulder. Not bad. I think this is the brisket. Yep. Oh, baby. Oh, man. That, smells, that scent just. Woo! Smoked brisket, 24 hour smoke. They slow smoke it for 24 hours. So don't go here and say you want your meat well done or anything like that. Uh, you're not gonna find any blood in the meat. The meat is so tender that it just, you don't even need to cut it. Oh wow. Mmm. just melts in your mouth they give you some of their uh, house-made barbecue sauce of course you got to do the dip mmm not too sweet not too spicy you taste the tomato base in that barbecue sauce not bad really good I'm trying to pick up this brisket, guys. I'm trying to pick up this brisket, but it just falls off. It's so tender that it just comes apart. That crust from all that rub. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nice crust on the brisket. Mm. Oh, it's a beautiful day out, guys. 70 degrees in Brooklyn. You almost don't want to use the barbecue sauce sometimes because that flavor. Here's a close up. You don't want to put too much barbecue sauce on it. Just, just a little bit, a little. Just kiss it. House made coleslaw. I've had better slaw than this. I've had better slaw than this. It's typical diner coleslaw. It's nothing crazy. I like my coleslaw with thick cut cabbage, you know. Uh, mayo on the heavier side. There's not enough mayo on here. All right, we're going to wrap the brisket up. Next on the list the jerk ribs the ribs just come apart with the fork you don't even need to cut them they give you some chopped scallions there's a piece of the rib and yeah I'm eating ribs with a fork what can I say I, I mean I got napkins and stuff but I'm gonna go take photos later I don't want to get barbecue sauce all over my camera equipment you know because some of this stuff it stays on your fingers no matter how many times you wash it Here's a look at the rack. The 
Really good. Mm. Oh man, falls right off the bone. Well, not exactly fall off the bone completely like stewed meat, but you want the meat to kind of come off the bone nice and easily as you take a bite with no effort. I'm not used to having ribs this tender, man. Yeah, I'm eating fast. That's not the... I'm not fast forwarding the footage or anything. All right, let's find out how good the collard greens are. Collard greens mixed with pork shoulder. Not on to me. It smells good, smoky. Everything is smoky. All right. I love how there's pieces of pork in the in the vegetable. In the collard greens. Mm. The brisket for the win. The brisket and the ribs, I don't know what I like better. They were both phenomenal. I just think I think the brisket probably stole the show. Anyways, I'm gonna go for a walk. Anyways, guys, it's been a really pleasant evening for me. Having tried uh, a pizza that uh, was unique to me and having some of the best barbecue that I've had ever. Seriously. These barbecue joints are popping up. This place has been here a while, but they're very few. It's not like Texas. Places like this, they're very sparse in between. You got to drive out to them, and it was worth taking that trip. Love the barbecue, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this culinary adventure. Like, share, subscribe. I would appreciate it. And until next time, guys, keep those bellies full, preferably with some better cold fired pizza than this and some good ass barbecue this is antonio signing off